Howdy folks, welcome back to Duke Frazier Productions. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Cimarron's Single Action Army Clone 1873 with a black powder frame. Stay tuned. <coughs> That black powder smoke don't taste so good. <coughs> Alright folks, so as I said, we're going to be taking a look at Cimarron's uh, 1873 single action army clone. Uh, this one is made by Uberti over in Italy. And it's marked right across the top here. Uh, Cimarron... F-A-C, or F-A Co, which is Firearms Company, Fire, uh, Cimarron Firearms Company, uh, Fredericksburg, Texas, and then A.U. Birdie, Italy. So that's marked here across ta uh, top, where it should say Samuel Colt, um, address New York City. Um, and then marked 45 Colt on the barrel. So this is uh, a copy, like I said, of the first generation Colt. Um, and it is what is known as the black powder frame. So that means it has a screw uh, here in the frame to retain the base pin. It has that large bullseye uh, ejector knob for you to engage to eject. And it has the tapered blade front sight and the V-notch rear sight. Uh, so this is uh, a clone of the very first Colts that came out, the, the 73 single actions. And this is a pretty faithful uh, reproduction. However, there are a couple, two or three things that are or wrong with it uh, to be a, a, an exact copy. One being this knurled knob here on the uh, screw that holds in the base pin. That should actually be flush, but you can uh, get those from Cimarron. And from what I've been told by other guys that have gotten these, you can get them for free. Just call Cimarron, they'll send it to you. Uh, so that one can be replaced. That's no big deal and no big problem at all. Um, the other one that's really noticeable and this is a Uberti thing. This isn't a Pieta thing. Pieta does it right on these. Um, but right up there on the top of the hammer spur, that's supposed to be knurled uh, so that it's easier to grab. On this Uberti, it is laser engraved. On the originals, they were stamped. On the Pieta versions of this typical gun, uh, they're stamped as well. Uh, so that's one thing Uberti gets wrong that I really wish it would fix. Uh, that's the most annoying thing out of the whole thing is, is just that knurled uh, laser engraved knurling on a hammer but there's not much I can do about that and then the other thing that makes this not a faithful complete 100% faithful reproduction is that it has the plunger uh, handspring system in it which I totally would am fine with that because that means you don't have to worry about that handspring breaking on you and having to replace the entire hand um, I've got another Uberti gun that's had that and that gun's probably seen a couple hundred maybe even a couple thousand rounds, maybe not 1,500 rounds. Anyway, uh, that system will last you a lot longer, uh, makes the action a lot smoother, and you don't have to worry about that part breaking. Uh, so that's one last thing. The only problem is if you take it apart, you easily lose that little sucker. It's tiny. So being that this is what they call a black powder frame, this is a modern firearm, so it will take smokeless rounds. I wouldn't put anything real hot through it, though. Um, but Black Hills uh, cowboy loads are just fine, and the other cowboy loads out there will work fine. You might be able to get a little bit warmer. I'm not going to say do it because um, you might take a chance, but this will handle smokeless ammo uh, very easily. And you can also load black powder for, uh, for it too. I, in fact, in this video, we'll shoot a few uh, black powder rounds through this gun and, uh, and see how they do. Uh, so without further ado, let's get over to the range and see how it does. All right, I said we was going to the range just real quick here. Um, we don't have the target camera today because I took aim cam with me out to the range. And I uh, usually want to take aim cam. I don't take the target camera. However, aim cam threw a fit. I don't know what happened. Uh, my SD card had got wet at one time. I'm hoping that's all the problem is. But uh, I had some short in there and the SD card melted. And fortunately, I was able to get it out of the cam uh, aim cam before it went up in flames. Uh, but I got it out. Everything cooled down. Uh, so we did not have aim cam footage and because of that I readjusted the main camera um, that you're seeing me through here and uh, We shot that way which you don't get a good view of the gun that way, but you can still see it being shot
All right, so to load the 73 single action, what you do is you bring her back to half cock, open that there loading gate. <laughs> I'm doing through this through the free screen, so be patient with me, but you drop in one, skip a chamber, drop in one, two, three, and four. And then you bring her back to full cock and lower the hammer and it is resting on an empty chamber. There's nothing in there. Alrighty, so I got the uh, 73 single action and we got it uh, loaded up here with uh, five rounds of Black Hills uh, Cowboy, 235 grain bullets, I believe they are. And uh, I got some clay birds keep falling over here, but we're gonna try to pick them off. I'm about 10 paces away from them. So let's see what we can do. I think I got two with one that time. Tell you what, it's kind of hard to hit them when they're laying on their side. All right, so to eject, what you do is open loading gate, bring it to half cock, bring it up, and you push it out with the little, sorry, I'm doing this through the reader finder, push it out with the ejector rod here. And sometimes they'll just fall out. Not always though. When they don't fall out, you use the ejector rod. Alrighty, so we're set back up here. I got two pumpkins this time and three of the clay birds that were left over from the last one. I just knocked the one over. I didn't get the double I thought I did. But anyway, we're gonna hit one of the pumpkins and we're gonna knock out the clay birds. The other pumpkins actually for another video I'm filming at the same time as this one. Um, so we're gonna go ahead. I got it loaded up again and uh, we'll see how it does here. I still don't think I hit that last one. I just kind of shot around it. Didn't think I'd fired five. Did a pretty good number on that pumpkin. Let's go take a look at it. Well, that's the out holes, that's the in holes. Hard cast bullet, it don't tear them up all that bad, but uh, we'll set this up, we'll put a good side out, we'll maybe hit it again here. So it did recover one of the bullets. <laughs> it was just laying up uh, behind that pumpkin. This is one of those that hit the pumpkin. But uh, digging, for uh, digging for bullets is all fun and games until you find a piece of glass. This is why you don't leave this stuff laying around at the range. Unfortunately, I hit a fairly blunt side and I did not cut myself. Um, but don't shoot glass at your local shooting range. You wanna do it at your private range, that's fine. I ain't saying what you can and can't do at your own range, but if you're at a public range, don't be using that stuff. All right, so this version of the uh, Cimarron 1873 Single Action Army is the copy of the first model or the black powder framed. So instead of got a, a cross pin across here that releases the uh, uh, base pin. It's got a screw and then you have the big bullseye target um, or excuse me, <laughs> you have the big bullseye ejector rod where your finger engages on that. And uh, so this is what's called by a lot of folks is the black powder frame. And as you can see we can shoot smokeless through it. But being it's a black powder frame we're gonna go ahead and, and shoot some black powder rounds uh, just for fun. And <clears throat> these are my own loads they are a 200 grain uh, Lee conical, uh, 452 diameter, I believe. Then I got about 36 grains of 3F black powder and a standard CCI primer. Some guys will load them with Magnum primers. I found that you get a heck of a lot more recoil that way. 
uh, so I don't do it. But uh, I got this loaded up here and we're gonna keep hammering on that same pumpkin uh, that I've been hammering on for this video and another video as well uh, that we just filmed at the same time. So we'll uh, show you how these work. They do all right. And this gun is starting to gum up pretty bad. So we'll see if we can make it through what we were going to film today. Because I didn't bring any gun oil with me. And I'm getting a little letting in the barrel. Uh, so obviously I didn't get enough grease. So I'm honestly surprised with this. Um, <laughs> this thing has been shot with a lot of black powder loads today. And it's still just going fine. The only problem I have is what I'm unloading. And I think that's because the, the cases are dragging on the residue on the frame. But that base pin, everything is still running good. Which is really surprising because the Remington's uh, new model army, uh, the black powder cap and ball one, has a small base pin like this Colt does but it has, uh, it gums up a lot faster. I can't get through 15, 20 rounds without having to take it apart and clean the, the thing because it gums up so fast. This thing has that same similar style, small base pin in it. And this thing's had, with smokeless included, damn near 100 rounds today. Well, it's had at least 100 rounds because um, I had three boxes of ammo, one was partially full. So, <laughs> this thing is uh, still running excellent. Part of that might have to do with uh, the fact that the Colts have a cylinder bushing, but I'm looking in there and uh, that bushing is rotating on the base pin. So the base pin is still perfectly clean. Or, well, it's not clean, it's dirty, but it's still, still functional. The only thing about this type of gun, uh, this black powder frame, is if you need to pull that base pin out to clean it, you can't just pop the little dinky over and yeah, I got this in the shade I'm sorry we'll move around here before we get you in the sun you can't just slide the little dinky over under the barrel uh, and pull the base pin out this one you got a screw and this one I've got in there tight so that I don't lose it but you loosen that screw and then the base pin slides out and you can drop the cylinder out and this is the the more traditional style and it's got the blade front sight the v-notch it's unloaded uh, the v-notch Backside, I can't hardly show this up pointed at my head, but anyway, and just to show you, we are empty. So, this gun is a lot of fun. I gotta say, it is a lot, a lot of fun. So, we're gonna head back to the hacienda. This thing's starting to cool down now. Um, we're gonna head back to the hacienda here and do the talking portion. Three videos in one setting. Pretty impressed with myself today. All right, so I'm very, very satisfied with this gun. This thing is awesome. Um, now, Cimarron guns tend to be a little bit high. Um, I got this particular gun through Bud's Gun Shop, uh, so I got a fairly decent deal on it. Uh, but there's lots of venues and avenues out there uh, if you want to go uh, go this route. Now, this one is the Uberti. Uh, there is also the Pieta version of this gun, also offered by Cimarron. And uh, I'm just, I really, really, really like this gun. This thing ate up about 40 rounds of smokeless ammo without a problem. And then it ate up probably twice that amount in uh, black powder loads. And this gun is still fully functional. The cylinder sticks a little bit, but I mean, you can still use this. I did have some problems with uh, loading and unloading after it got gummed up, and that was just the black powder inside the frame hanging up on the case heads. Um, but this gun performed excellent, and I could probably take this out and put another box of smokeless. I don't know if I'd take another block, box of black powder loads because uh, it is gumming up. I'll probably, I'd probably have to oil it up a little bit, but this thing did fine. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, that small base pin on uh, Remington styles that have a small base pin, 
they gum up pretty fast. Um, I've never tried the cartridge ones though. Um, but this one with a small base pin, this is still going. So very, very impressed with that. Very happy with it. Um, this gun is functioned well. And this gun is fairly accurate as well. Um, I also today filmed uh, another video that involves the 45 Schofield load. And that load was shooting really, really good. The 45 Colt rounds uh, were fairly accurate, but that Schofield, I was drilling holes in the same hole almost every time. Probably in a group about that big offhand. Uh, so this gun, I'm very, very pleased with. Um, so if you're looking for a, a 73 single action uh, in the traditional black powder frame, the Cimarron is a good route to go. All right, folks, that's going to take care of today with uh, Cimarron's uh, 73 single action. Uh, if you liked what you see on the channel thus far, be sure to hit that subscribe button down there below. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Patreon. Links are down there in the description box. We're trying to post somewhat weekly updates over there on Facebook, and I'm trying to get organized and get some more stuff over there on Patreon. Uh, but head over, check them out. Maybe think about giving us something to help keep the channel going. And I'm not sure what the next episode is, but I'll throw a little clip in here and tell you what that is. And be sure to stay tuned and keep your powder dry.